All right, we're on to chapter six, problem set three. First one is problem 23. When the three blocks in the diagram are released from rest, they accelerate with a magnitude of L of magnitude of 0 0.5 meters per second per second. Block one has a mass of M, block two has a mass of 2M, and block three has a mass of 2M also. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction um, between block two and the table? All right. Well, one of the ways to um, consider this, first of all, what, one thing to, to keep in mind here is if you let this go, because this one's heavier than this one, the acceleration is going to be in this direction. So let's just keep that in mind for now. Um, I think the easiest way to consider this is to try to think about it as a system. So let's write that up. So let's think about it as a system. Um, so if I think about all the force, well, let's do force diagrams for each of them. We'll just do it fast. Okay. So for this one here, we have a little bit of mg. And now the tension, this one has to accelerate up. So the tension here has to be a little more than the weight. That's fine. If we look at this one in the middle here, okay, look at the force diagram for this one. So we have 2mg is the weight. There's the normal force. Now, this one's accelerating to the right, so this tension here has to be bigger than, oh, sorry, got a little excited. So this tension has to be a little bit bigger than this tension here. We'll call this one T1. We'll call this one T2. Make that change up here, T1, because that's one piece of string there. And then if we do this green one over here, two mg also, and then this tension here. T2. So when you take these all together, okay, um, one of the ways to consider this is what's happening to the pulley. So this one wants to make the pulley rotate this way, but this tension makes it want to rotate back. This one here makes it want to go this way. This one here makes it want to go back. Now, oh, I missed some forces. It's accelerating to the right. It's also moving to the right or is at least trying to go to the right. Which means we're missing some, sorry, I missed some friction here. So there has to be some there has to be some um, friction to the left. I totally forgot it completely. So what balances? So if I take the whole thing as a system, this one balances this one. This T2 balances this T2, this T1 balances this T1. And so when I think about the net force on the system is equal to the mass of the system times the acceleration of the system. When I write the net force statement for the system, I have this 2mg here. And then that's causing the whole thing to go this way. And then what's on the, what's making it go the other way? The kinetic friction and this mg here. So that's how we that's how we do the system there. All right. So again, another thing we know for sure is that when I think about the frictional force, it's equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And that's for this block right here, because this is where the friction is. So put it all together. Mass of the system times the acceleration of the system is equal to, I have 2mg minus mg. So I have mg minus 2. So the mass of the system is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5m. It tells us that the acceleration of the system is 0 0.5 meters per second per second. 
This is just mg here. Now, what's going on here? Well, this frictional force here is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal, but what is the normal for this one right here? Because there's no acceleration up or down, the normal force here is equal to 2 mg. So in this case, we have to solve for the coefficient of friction. So 5 times 0.5 is 2.5 m. That's equal to 10 m minus 20 mu m. Now I like this because there's an m in each, so if I divide each by m, I end up with 2.5 is equal to 10 minus 20 mu. If I subtract this from both sides, I have negative 7.5 is equal to negative 20 mu. Seven point five divided by twenty. So I have a mu value of zero point three seven five. Now, in a technical sense, this is newtons per newton, but when you ever see it, they always divide those out, and you're just left with that. Let's do 25. 25 says block B in figure 6.31 weighs 711 newtons. So block B weighs 711 newtons. Okay. The coefficient of static friction between the block and the table is 0 0.25. So this mu here is 0 0.25. All right. The angle here is 30 degrees. Find the maximum weight of block A for which the system will be stationary. All right. So here's a pro tip. So we can draw force diagrams for all the things, right? We can draw a force diagram for A, we can draw a force diagram for B, and we can draw a force diagram for the not. That is not apparent. That is not a pun. So let's do it for B first, okay? Let's do B. When I do the force diagram for B, I have a weight here. So this is M B. G, and we know this is 711 newtons, okay? I'm looking at the force diagram, and I there's no acceleration up or down, so this is the normal force, and it's also equal to 711 newtons. There's got to be some friction, because there's a cord pulling it this direction. We're going to call this T1, right? We're going to call this rope number one. This is T1 right here. And I can actually calculate this pretty straight away here. The friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal. All right, so if the coefficient of friction is 0.25. When you look at it, the normal has to be equal to the weight. So this is 711. So this frictional force is we'll call it 178 newtons. So this is 178 newtons equal to that frictional force. So that tells me T1 has to be equal to 178 newtons. Okay? Let's do block A. We'll uh, give it a little color here. So block A is interesting because I mean, this is what we're actually solving for, is this. But I know that it has to balance because everything is stationary. We're going to call this one T2, and we're going to call this chord number 2 right there. So if we could find out chord number 2, we could actually know that these things are equal. So this is the cool part. What we're going to do now is we're going to write a force diagram, or draw a force diagram for the knot. So I know this is T2 here.
this is T1, and this over here We'll call this one here three, so this is T3. And what I like about this is, again, nothing is accelerating, so the forces have to balance. So I know my value for T1, I'm gonna get it from here, it's 178. And if that's true, what do I know about, I'm going to call this T3 in the x direction, has to be equal to 178 also. Which is such a cool thing. Because this one here, T3 in the y direction, has to be equal to T2. And this angle here, which we'll call theta, which we know is 30 degrees, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, I could write a tangent statement. So the tangent of my angle is equal to the ratio of T3y divided by T3x, which in this case is also, because the forces have balanced, T2 divided by T1, and T2 is what I'm solving for, so T2 is equal to T1 times the tangent of our angle. So 178 times the tangent of 30. Okay, we'll call this 103 newtons. And if T2 is equal to 103 newtons, then the weight of A has to be 103 newtons. Okay, let's look at number 27. 27 says body A weighs 102 newtons and body B 32 newtons. Okay, so this says this one here is 102 newtons. Did I just say that? Is that 102? And this one is 32. Perfect. The coefficients of friction between A and the incline are mu s is 0.56 and mu k is 0.25. So that's going to be important. So the static friction coefficient is 0 0.56 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.25. Let's keep those in mind. Uh, this angle is 40 degrees. Okay, picture looks good. Uh, it says, let the positive direction of X be up the incline. I don't know how important that is, but they're looking like this. So if we draw our axis this way, this is the plus X direction, and this is the plus Y direction. Okay. Um, in unit vector notation, what is the acceleration of A if A is initially at rest, um, if it is moving up the incline, if it is moving down the incline? Okay, so let's do the at rest first. Okay, this one might take multiple pages. We'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to draw the force diagram over here, and we'll go from there. So we know we have some mg. And when I break it up into its component parts here, okay, I know this is then the normal force here. Now, there's a couple things happening. If it's at rest, we got to figure out whether it's going to go up or go down, because I don't know. Like, it's being pulled this way, but it's got this down, so we have to actually put some stuff on here. So I know, first, the only thing I do know for sure is that there's some tension in the string. So I'm gonna put the friction on here in a moment and we're gonna see what happens. But let's draw the force diagram for, for B here. Let me give B a little bit of color. Okay, so let's do the force diagram for B. 
I'll do it down here. So we know that it weighs 32. This is M, G, and this is 32 news. And then there's some tension. Now, I don't know about the tension. Is the tension greater? Is the tension less? We don't know. We have to compare. So let's do a little bit of math first. So it told us that um, it told us that the weight of this guy is 102. So I'm going to put 102 newtons here. And this is our 40 degrees. It's the same as this one here. So if I do 102 sine 40, I end up with about 66 newtons here. If I do um, 102 cosine 40, this gives me about 78 newtons here. Now, what does that mean? That also means that my normal force is also 78 newtons. So if you compare, before we take into consideration the tensions, um, which in the system are going to cancel, or the friction, which is bigger here, my 32 or my 66? Because 66 is in the down the ramp direction, causing this to rotate this way. But there's only 32 causing it to rotate this way. So I think it's going to win. So I think that the initial acceleration direction is down the ramp, which means that there's going to be some friction in the up the ramp direction. It also means that If this one's going to accelerate down the ramp, that this one has to accelerate up. And so the tension here is going to be bigger than the weight. Now, I need to make my tension over here a little bigger, but we don't, I mean, really, we don't need to get too excited. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And we don't want it bigger than this, though, because that wouldn't be any good. Okay. So we have, um, we know this guy's going to accelerate up. This guy's going to accelerate down the ramp. That's now, this is the coefficient of static friction because we're still doing it when it's at rest. Okay, we're still doing it when it's at rest. So let's talk about it. The net force on the system should be equal to the mass of the system times the acceleration of the system. What are the net forces on the system? Well, the two tensions, right, the two tensions are going to cancel each other out in this context. So that's good, but we're still left with a bunch of forces here, right? So the F of the system we have in the down the ramp direction, we have um, M A G sine theta. That's making go this way, right? We have some frictional force in the opposite direction. And then um, also in the opposite direction, we have minus mbg. Now, we could have put the tensions in there. We could put this one um, uh, a plus t, and this one would be a minus t. Um, But it doesn't matter because we let them cancel. Okay, so now I have M system. Oh, we can. So one of the things we need to do is we need to find the masses of each of these. So let's get the mass of this one over here. If M A G is equal to 102, then M A should be equal to 10.2. And again, I'm going to use the 10 value for G. And then MBG is equal to 32, so then MB is equal to 3.2. So what is the mass of the system then? 10.2 uh, plus 3.2, I'm going to say 13.4 kilograms of masses. Okay, so I have 13.4. Times the acceleration of the system is equal to, well, we solved for this earlier, that's the 66 minus the frictional force. Now remember, one of the things about frictional force is it can be the coefficient of friction times the normal. We'll come back to that. And this one is 32. So let's do this one real fast. 
the frictional force equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal. We solved for the normal earlier, it was 78, so we're doing static friction. So we have 0 0.56 times 78. All right, we'll call it 44. I'm rounding a little bit, but it's just for fun. So when I look at this problem, we're confronted with a little bit of an issue here because if I go to put in my 44 newtons here for friction, that doesn't make any sense because I have 66 in the down direction. If I have 44 in the up direction, I mean, that would give me like 44, 44 and 32. That's more than 66. So what's the situation that's going on here? Well. This equation that we know, this friction is equal to coefficient of friction times the normal force. This is actually, if I call these static frictions, this is actually your static friction maximum value. It's the maximum value that you get. So um, we know that between these two surfaces, it could give a friction up to 44 newtons. But do we need that much? And the answer is actually no. Like we have 66 trying to get it to go down the ramp and 32 stopping it. So really, if I think about it like that, the friction would only need to be 34 newtons. It could be up to 44, but it only needs to be 34 to balance everything out. And so what we're left with, okay, what we're left with is this idea that the net force, because the frictional force could be 44, but you only need 34, that tells us that the net force is equal to zero, and therefore the acceleration is also equal to zero. So that's a little complicated in terms of the fact that you have to realize that when you solve for this 44, it's not actually 44. Friction is a passive force. It's only going to give you as much as you need. This is really only 34. Okay? All right. Now, B says, what if it's moving up the incline? Okay? What if it's moving up the incline? How is it the same and how is it different? So we're going to have to modify our force diagram a little bit. We're going to have to modify our friction statement because if it's moving, we're going to have to switch from coefficient of static friction to coefficient of kinetic friction. And something really important, if it's moving up the ramp, what does that do to the frictional force? So if this block is in the up the ramp direction, all of a sudden your frictional force is in the down the ramp direction. So this is the kinetic frictional force now. So what happens to this statement though, is now we have this weird thing going on where what are the F net forces then? We have Mg or Mag sine theta, which is in the down the ramp direction. We have plus friction, because that's now in the same direction as this. All right, the tensions are going to cancel in the system again, and then minus the Mg. So now we have a whole different situation. So the mass of the system So this is mu k n minus m b g. All right, the mass of the system stays the same. So that was 13.4 times the acceleration of the system. Okay, and a g sine theta is 66 plus, well, what is this now? 
So you see that the coefficient of kinetic friction is a little different. So the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.25 times the normal force, which again is 78. So this is 19.5. So I have 66 plus 19.5 minus 32. I'll divide that all by 13.4. So the acceleration is 4 meters per second per second. Now it asks for um, it in unit vector notation. So the reason they're asking that is they want to know which direction the acceleration is. Is it up the ramp or down the ramp? So in this case, it said the velocity was up, but you look here, and I made this positive and this positive, even though that was this here. Um, and so the velocity is up, so the acceleration is down the ramp. So in unit vector notation, it'll be negative four i hat. Now this one says something similar. It says, oh, but what if it's moving down the incline, right? What if it's moving down the incline? Well, there's a, we're going to just change a couple things. We're going to change the direction of the friction. Okay. This time the frictional force is again in the up the ramp direction, but this time it's the kinetic friction. This value is going to stay the same. The only thing here that changes are these signs. So again, this is going to be minus the kinetic friction. So we have minus this value and minus this value. So this time the acceleration is only equal to about 1.1 meters per second per second. So the accelerations are different because if you change the direction of velocity, you change the direction of the friction. All right, let's do one more. 29 says, in figures, A, B, A and B have the same weights, 44, A and B have weights, 44 and 22 newtons respectively. Okay, let's put those on here. So this one is 44. And this one is 22 newtons. Okay. Determine the minimum weight of block C to keep A from sliding if the coefficient of static friction between the block and the table is 0.2. Okay, so that's going to be important. So it says here the coefficient of static friction between the block and the table is 0.2. All right, so we want the thing to not slide, correct? We want the thing to not slide. So we can draw this in two pieces or we can draw it as, as one piece. Um, it might be actually more instructive to draw it in, in two pieces, so let's do that. So let's draw the force diagram for, for A here. So we know that the earth is pulling it down. So this is M A G and we know that's equal to 44 newtons. The thing is though that there's more going on here because this guy's pushing down on him. True? Now you're going to be tempted to say like, "Oh, that's the weight that's MCG, but it's not. This is the normal force of C on A. And then what is the table doing? The table has to hold up both of them, right? If the table has to hold up both of them, so this is the, we're just gonna call this the normal. If I do C here, the force diagram for C, This is MCG, that's the weight, and this 
is the normal force of A on C. So what I like about this is that if you look at this force here and you look at this force here, they're actually Newton's third law force pairs. This is the normal force of C on A, this is the normal force of A on C. They're equal in strength and opposite direction act on the other object. If we do this guy over here, is MBG, which is 22 Newtons. And then this is going to be the tension. Uh, we missed that actually over here. Sorry, I forgot that. If you notice here, there's a tension. And because it's not moving, we also have the frictional force. Okay, sorry, I forgot two forces on there. I was thinking about the up and downs that were that were important here. So we have these these three really good force diagrams now, which I like. Um, and now I think we can answer the question. So if we think about it in terms of a system, we know that we need to keep it at rest. So the net force on the system is zero. If I think about the net force on the system, well, the thing that's trying to get the whole thing to go is this, because these two cancel, this cancels with those two, this tension cancels with this tension, and so what we're end up with is the two things that are really canceling each other out that are different forces are this 22 and this frictional force. So we have um, M be G minus the frictional force. Therefore, the frictional force is equal to MBG. Now, let's talk about that frictional force. That frictional force that exists between these two guys right here is going to be equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. But what normal force is it? Well, because it's this friction that exists right here, it's got to be this normal force right here. Tells us the coefficient of static friction. We'll get to that in a second. And so what is this normal force? Well, it doesn't have to be equal to the total down force. Well, the total down force is um, m a g plus this normal, but what do we know here? This is MAG, but isn't the normal force of C on A equal to the normal force of A on C? And what do I notice about the force of A on C? Isn't that equal to now? I'm sure you could have figured that out on your own pretty quickly. Like, I'll just think about this as one thing. And then the total weight would have been the addition of the weights. But we did it this way, so let's keep going. So, if I combine these two ideas here, I end up with this. MBG is equal to the friction, but the friction is equal to... And we know some of these things, right? This one is 22. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.2. This one's 44. And this is what we're solving for. I solve for MCG, it's equal to 66 newtons. Now, I don't love this because it's the smallest block and it kind of throws me off a little bit, but no one ever said that they were the same density object. Uh, and then there's a part B. It says block C is suddenly lifted off. What is the acceleration of block A if, you're going to give us a new coefficient of friction now, if all of a sudden you 
k is equal to 0. Point, is it 1 5? 1 5. All right, let me get rid of this stuff here. All right, let's do it up. F net of the system is equal to the mass of the system times the acceleration of the system. So we're going to lift this one off here. Let me just get rid of it completely. So that guy's gone. And so, oh, I got to redo the force diagram. So annoying. Sorry, I'll just be a moment. but it's not so interesting because now this thing is going to accelerate down therefore the tension is much less than it was before okay so now we have some good force diagrams so we see the two t's are going to balance each other out the normal and weight are going to balance each other out and so I'm left with so mass of the system times acceleration of the system is equal to remember friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times normal. Um, I think we may still put some stuff in here. So what's the mass of the system? Well. I come up here, mass of A is going to be 4.4 .4 kilograms, and the mass of B is going to equal to 2.2 kilograms. So therefore, the mass of the system is going to be 2.2 plus 4.4 times the acceleration. Mass of B is 22 minus the coefficient of friction is 0 0.15 and what's the normal force? 44. Now I know that because those two things have to balance. So this is 6.6 .6 times the acceleration is equal to 22 minus 6.6. .6. That's 0.15 times 4.4. Two point three three meters per second per second, and again, if you're using a g value of nine point eight, you're going to get something slightly different. Okay. 